I'm back at the Edenville Dam and it's still raining out. I filmed at the Sanford Dam this morning and the Tobacco River Dam. Uh, you can see behind me though, water is now flowing back through the Edenville Dam. So a lot of progress has been happening here. Uh, but before we get this video started, I want to make sure that I thank my patrons for their continued support. So thank you, Joshua. And thank you to Paul and Robin for sending me the letter through the mail. If you want to send me anything, I will pop my PO box up on the screen right now for you guys to send me anything there. But let's turn the camera around and I will try to keep as much water off the lens as possible. Like I said, we could see the water is flowing back through the Edenville Dam. They just redirected this on Friday. Kind of see the amount of dirt and clay they shoved across there, uh, blocking off the New River Path and dug out a lot of that dirt that was behind the coffer dam here, or that steel sheet pile cut off all that they had in place. Uh, they dug all that out, added a lot of riprap, and then in the front of the steel sheet pile cut off wall, they also dug out a lot of the clay that was in front of that. So once that work was done, again, they shoved a lot of clay, blocked that path off so that the water would start flowing through Edenville Dam. I do want to point out that a lot of this riprap is actually acting as kind of sediment control. Uh, it's supposed to be filtering out a lot of the sediment that could be coming from upstream here, upriver and flowing down towards the south. This is the Titabwasi River. And as you can see, we have had a ton of rain the last couple weeks, and it just keeps coming down more and more. Um, let's see how fast it's actually coming through here. A lot of sediment is still being stirred up down here. They do have a pathway, a roadway across here yet that they are going ahead and using the off-road dump trucks to create this road that they created today. So you can see all the sand. Uh, I actually did fly the drone. All that sand is coming from over there in front of Strikers Marina. So they're going ahead hauling all that sand over here and depositing it here. Soon there will be an eye wall that will be constructed spanning from uh, this kind of retaining wall over here through the earthen embankment all the way over there to the east side of that earthen embankment. I will cover a lot of the engineering diagrams and details at the end of this video, so make sure you stay tuned till the end if you want to check out a few of those. Um, but like I said, there is no more water flowing over there in that New River Path. We'll go over there in a little while and check out how the falls look now that there's no more water over there. Um, I am sure there's been a lot of people that were interested in that. I do want to mention though, let me go ahead and clean off the lens real quick. I do want to mention though that we have less than $1,000 to raise in order to get the uh, live camera up at Secor Dam hooked up. So if you want to go ahead and support those efforts, you can donate through the GoFundMe page down below. I'll take direct donations through PayPal. Just make sure you specify uh, which live camera you want the money going towards as well as I will take donations through the mail. If you want to send me a check or anything, also note what live camera you want to go to there. While I'm heading up here towards the top of Edenville Dam, I will also point out that I have links to all the equipment that I use in the, in the description down below. Uh, so make sure you check that out if you're interested. Also, uh, if you go ahead and click those links and purchase any item from Amazon within 24 hours of clicking that link, uh, they give a small kickback portion to the channel itself. So another way to go ahead and support me. Also, we're almost to 31,000 subscribers. So if you're not subscribed yet, make sure you go ahead and do that. We're almost there, guys. Hopefully, hopefully by the time this video comes out, we are at 31,000 subscribers. But yeah, go ahead and turn the camera around real quick. And last time I was here, they were installing this sheet pile cutoff wall. They completely finished that. And like I said, added a lot of this riprap behind the dam and well, as they put it in front of the dam as well. I do have some video from when I was off site and that work was happening here. So I'll go ahead, hopefully I'm able to post that at the same time that I go ahead and post this video. Looks like they did a little bit of erosion work over here, leveling off some of the embankment as well. But yeah, pretty cool up here. Give you guys a quick shot from the top up here. So this is directly on top of the powerhouse. There's no way to really go across here anymore. The, 
off-road dump trucks are able to go across here as well as this large loader but with that water rushing through behind the powerhouse over there behind Edenville Dam uh, you can't drive normal everyday vehicles any longer looks like he's got some uh, sediment control blankets there that they're probably going to go ahead and put on this road that they just laid in place today it looks like they're going ahead and compacting it a little bit but yeah here's a great shot from the top of Edenville Dam and you can see how much water is still flowing through here powerhouses are still untouched over here on this side those won't have anything happening to them until uh, reconstruction begins on this dam again these are all interim repairs it's definitely chilly out here today i think it's probably colder than 45 degrees but we are having some very strong winds uh, coming from the north you can see them up here uh, this is to the north up the titabwasi river a lot of vegetation growth out here on the lake bed and these trees over here in this area when i was down there last uh, we're about 10 feet tall so i'm sure they're a little bit taller now at this point but looks like the storm is rolling in a little bit more so let's go ahead jump in the truck and head over towards that side of the river and i'll show you guys the uh, used to be the new river path but it is no longer a river path any longer before i show you guys that new river path i'm going to actually jump into some drone video here uh, show you a little project that's happening and you'll be able to see this in my next clip of on the ground video some erosion control work that's happening as well as they are stockpiling some sand and glacial till or clay as i like to call it over here in this area um, so this area is between the edenville and tobacco river dams and it's just in front of strikers marina i'm going to cover a few questions though as well that have been posted a lot of people are wondering why are they removing these spillways instead of rebuilding the dam again these are just interim repairs these are interim repairs on both the tobacco river dam as well as the edenville dam and a lot of this work is just in preparation for the next spring uh, snow melt a lot of that water is going to be coming back through here so getting a lot of that prep work done of redirecting the water through Edenville Dam again and stabilizing some of these embankments so again this is not rebuilding of the dams uh, the rebuilding step will actually come after these interim repairs the timeline for rebuilding Edenville Dam here is between 2025 and 2026 so a couple more years uh, we can see a great shot here of the drone showing the 100 ton crane located over there on Edenville Dam and a great aerial view showing the Titabwasi River now flowing back through Edenville Dam. You can see a ton of that riprap actually does look like some falls in this area uh, that the water is going through and that riprap is serving the purpose of trapping a lot of the sediment that is coming from upriver here and flowing downriver so it just doesn't fill in uh, the old river path that they just got done clearing out. So again, a lot of people has asked about the vegetation though on the lake beds. Uh, they are going to complete a plan for this next year, whether it be using herbicides or manually going out there and cutting the vegetation off the lake bed to control those trees. Uh, the Four Lakes Task Force is going to put a, together a plan next year that kind of details uh, what they're going to do to remove a lot of that. Going to go ahead, fly down the river path again there is only one river path now this is the original river path uh, restored back to flowing through Edenville Dam and we have some awesome fall colors here in Michigan you can see from the drone I was lucky enough that the rain did split a little bit and I got a short chance to be able to fly the drone and get a few of these aerial videos really quick you can see they lined uh, the channel back down here uh, removed a portion of this dike so that that water is rejoining back up to what used to be the new river path uh, but it is no longer um, pretty much by the time i'm filming this voiceover they are filling in this new river path so that will no longer exist so we don't need to have the debate of what i'm calling these anymore um, there will only be one river path from this point on another great shot facing down at what used to be edenville falls though you can kind of see uh, where a lot of that back cutting has occurred in the large drop off that we're seeing in the clay so this is probably the last opportunity that i'm going to get of filming edenville falls and showing 
uh, what they look like without water going over them. I wasn't able to get down there in person. Stop back up here again real quick. I was over here filming at Strikers earlier today, but going to kind of show you where all of this sand is heading to. You know, a lot of the sand uh, earlier today was heading over towards the Edenville Dam uh, where they built that bridge across. Fisher Contracting has a ton of off-road dump trucks in here right now. And right now they're currently working on hauling a lot of the sand over to right here. And you can see they're stockpiling this. They're stockpiling this because this will be used in front of the eye wall as well as later on when they go to repair this embankment. So take a look down here. You can see how much this earthen embankment has eroded all along down here. So that is like that all the way to Edenville Dam. So currently right now, Fisher, they did some studies and found out that this is really good uh, class two sand. So they're gonna go ahead and remove as much as they can. You can kind of see where the fence is outlining it and where they have stripped a little bit of the overburden off the top so that they just have uh, solely just that sand and they're stripping it down to the glacial till, that clay right now. You can see a good example of the glacial till and clay right here, all that gray material. That will also be used along this earthen embankment as well as they are going to use it along the eye wall over there as well to armor it a little bit more. Uh, this glacial till clay is really good about not letting water penetrate it. So that is why that's going to be used over there. It looks like so far right now, the goal is to just strip out as much of the sand as they can as possible. You can see they have a couple ditches put in place here that they can go ahead and uh, keep driving over this while well, they can go ahead and keep stockpiling the sand over here. So, looks like uh, they're still over there, McNally's Crane trying to hoist out the coffer dam. I was just over there a little bit earlier today. Um, that will be a completely different video, so stay tuned for that. But like I said, let's head on over to the other side of where Edenville Dam is and take a look at that new river path that no longer exists. Jumping back to the drone video again, we are still by Edenville Falls. Um, again, I wasn't able to get out here in person. It was just starting to rain a lot more later on in the day. So I just decided to fly the drone down there instead uh, when I had, did have this little bit of break in the rain. You can kind of see the holes uh, that were created though where a lot of those carp used to sit. Um, the guys from Spicer actually told me though that they did go down here and try to relocate any fish that were trapped in here. And there was hardly no fish that were remaining in this new river path. Uh, different story than the old river path where there was a lot of fish trapped in there behind that dike. I'm going to keep flying up here towards the north now with the drone, probably 50 to 100 feet climbing in altitude, and we'll be able to see a little bit better view. You can actually see right where that new river path used to come through there, uh, right where they have the drain underneath that road they were constructing when I was out there. And all that sand for that newly constructed road is coming from the location in the last clip uh, over there between the Edenville and the Tobacco River Dam where they're stripping that off the lake bed. Another great shot here, directly behind Edenville Dam. You can see a little bit of that sand and sediment is piling up directly behind the powerhouse. Uh, we can see that they did cut off a little portion of that retaining wall that's coming out the back of the powerhouse as well to let that water try to flow straight through the dam and not be directed over towards the east side and cut into that. Uh, the embankment on the river over there any further to stop erosion. You can also see where that sheet pile cutoff wall is located directly in front of the riprap. Uh, they were lined that with riprap on each side of that sheet pile cutoff wall. Here's a shot from the east side of the dam. So again, Edenville Dam right here in front of me. You can see the new roadway that they're putting in place. So they did put a little bit of that barrier matting down and they're now shoving gravel over the top of it. This used to be the new river path though. You can kind of see the channel where it was cut right through here. And then down there is Edenville Falls. 
So I'm not gonna go ahead and walk down there right now. I'll actually probably fly the drone when I get back over to my truck over there and get a little bit closer look at those. But yeah, a lot of work that's just keeps happening here. There's someone that mentioned, well, I need to move the live camera that's downriver here up a little bit higher because these uh, dirt mounds are in the way. Those will be moved actually maybe this week yet. So they're gonna go ahead, bulldoze a lot of this dirt off, level this off as much as possible and bring this fill back in to kind of fill in this area where the new river path once was. Kind of see the area where the eye wall is gonna come across though. So I'm standing right here on this earthen embankment. Actually, it looks like the earthen embankment over here on this side was made out of uh, clay, so glacial till. But yeah, that eye wall is going to come right from the middle of Edenville Dam there and come directly over this way. Still have the 100 ton crane on site here as well. And yeah, it is definitely windy out here. Another shot of the lake bed and all the cottonwood trees, a couple willow trees mixed in there as well. Nice Michigan fall colors out here that we have. Let's go ahead, throw the drone back up in the air now and take another look at the aerial views. This drone shot was taken about 300 feet in altitude directly over the top of Edenville Dam. Uh, I'm now starting to pan the camera up on the drone facing towards the east. Again, the newly constructed roadway right in the center of the screen that they were just laying down a little bit of that erosion mat and covering that back up with gravel. I'm going to keep panning the camera around a little bit further. You can see that they actually started to backfill a little bit of the clay at this period into that new river path. And Edenville Falls is now in the center of the screen. Uh, the Titabwasi River flowing towards the south, M30 Bridge we see first and then way in the background is the Curtis Road Bridge and the river path coming from the right hand side is the original river path that now has the Titabwasi River flowing back through it once again. Again, awesome Michigan fall colors here in the background. Middle top of the screen is the Tobacco River Dam way over there. The roadway we're seeing now is the M30 and the bridge you're seeing is a Bailey type bridge that is the M30 temporary causeway bridge. And now I will start to pan the camera back down and we will be directly over the top of Edenville Dam once again. So when people saw that the spillways were being removed, they immediately thought, well, this dam is not going to be rebuilt. This is how it's going to stay, and the river is just going to continue flowing through here. The lakes will not be restored. Again, though, these are just the interim repairs. When the final repairs are made, uh, new spillways will be created inside of both of these retaining walls here on Edenville Dam, as well as the Tobacco River Dam, and all the dams in general. Um, Crest gates will be added to the top of those, and then all of the lakes will be refilled. At least that is the current plan, and it seems like all the regulations and the laws are proceeding as usual. Uh, they're getting the correct permitting to allow this to happen. So that is the current plan. I'm going to go ahead now and actually toss it over to the Four Lakes Task Force presentation and go over a few of those engineering diagrams and details that will go into some of these details a little bit more on the rebuilding here at Edenville Dam. So this is a, um, a picture of from June 2020. This is about a month after the dam failure. Um, when you're looking at this picture, you can, uh, in the, in the very bottom middle of the picture, you'll see a, a sediment bar across the Titabwasi River. Um, towards the bottom right, you'll see where the river is currently flowing, not through the original channel of the river, but through the breachway. This is where all the trees were washed out and the, and the water rerouted itself. And then in the upper right, um, you'll see where the uh, Tobacco River is flowing over from, uh, you know, from the tobacco side of Wixom Lake and has eroded the embankment. So what Eagle, next slide. So what Eagle did is they issued the emergency permit and this just summarizes the work areas. Um, the right embankment repair, you can see where that is in the upper right, the spillway demolition uh, on the, uh, sorry, on the upper right, the right embankments on the upper left, uh, the copper dam and sediment control structure, the eye wall construction, uh, the breachway restoration, and then the sediment removal. 
And I, I so, think one of the things we got asked at the board meeting yesterday, Ron, was, well, it seems like a lot of effort. Uh, why don't you just let it go where it's, it's at? But I think there's three objectives, right? One is we're trying to manage sediment flow downstream and stabilize these dams. Two, there's a natural resource reason to get this river routed um, into the process. And then actually this creates a little bit of embankment that you know helps some of the undercutting that's occurring in, in places to, to work. But that's from a stabilization. From a future point of view, we get the, the water back where the spillway is going to be, which we can then actually have a restoration of a plant around that spillway. Correct. Yep. And the mid, you know, the funding. Uh, and Dave, I know you touched on the funding. This, this is all being the majority of this work. I would say 75% of this work is being funded through the NRCS, which is the uh, Natural Resource Conservation Service. And obviously, it used to be this, you know. So, uh, soil conservation service and so there's a, a lot of focus on stopping erosion stopping soil uh, sediment transport stabilizing um, the erosion and returning the ecosystem to its original state i would also say and paul could add to this um, the uh, the design as we're going through and um, designing these interim stabilization measures. We're also thinking about the future restoration of the dam and uh, incorporating as much of the um, NRCS funded stabilization measures in a way that they would work into the into the long term restoration plan. Right. And the, the thing. Yeah. One. I'll go ahead, Ron or Paul. Yeah, well, I guess one example of that is it, you showed it on a previous slide too. Is is the sister walls that we were constructing on the tobacco side? Uh, we sized those sister walls to work with uh, the new concrete weirs that the NRCS paid for and, and Fisher has constructed. So that is going to be the foundation uh, for when we do bring the lakes back up and put in new spillway gates. Um, and so when we were designing that, we we kind of were looking at our 30% designs at the time and finding a way to incorporate that and, and maximize uh, the dollars that are being spent right now, as well as spillway capacity in the future. Um, and then the work here that we're doing um, on the Edenville side or the Titabawasi side, it's it's the same approach. Um, you know, we need to basically we're, we've cut these these spillways down to their base slab. But we did notice in this picture, we did save the left training wall looking downstream. Uh, we consider that an asset for when we reconstruct the dam. Um, and, and we we reconstruct and further demo uh, this powerhouse and spillway uh, when we come back to put in new gates. And then the same example when we, in the next couple of slides, we'll show that eye wall embankment uh, that closes the current breach channel. Um, that material, a lot of the steel sheet pile cutoff wall that we are driving now, uh, will be left in place and used as an asset when we uh, extend that cutoff wall up um, further to a further elevation when we rebuild that left embankment. So everything we're doing now, we're we're trying to make sure that we're maximizing that those dollars and that effort that we can incorporate it and use it as a foundation uh, when we rebuild these dams. So the um, second, so so the the spillway rollway that's been removed. Um, one thing that has happened is over the years, um, sediment has accumulated in the bottom of Wixom Lake. We do not want that sediment to flush downstream when we uh, restore the river to its original route. And so we're installing a sediment control structure. Um, and the red line on the right side of the screen shows the location of that sediment control structure. And on the left side of the screen, you can see the sheet pile being dried. Essentially, um, we're gonna sheet pile around that. That sheet pile is gonna be set at an elevation equal to the sediment level in the upstream portions. And um, so water will flow over that sheet pile that'll all be lined with rock and then it'll flow through um, the, the dam with the rollway removed. Um, we, um, before we can get the river on its original route, um, obviously there was a sediment plug in the river. So on the left-hand side, you can see all of the erosion that got 
and sediment that got um, deposited in the river that now has all been removed. That was approximately 30,000 yards of material. And, um, and you can also see that some riprap was placed in that area uh, to prevent further erosion. Paul, you might want to touch base on the eye wall here and how this will work. Yep. So I mentioned a minute or two ago, the, we need to close uh, the breach channel before we can divert the water back into the Titabawasi River uh, through the former spillway footprint. So what we're doing here is we've kind of lined up where when we come back to reconstruct this left embankment uh, looking downstream, uh, there'll be two things placed here. First is the, the embankment will be restored. But this is also an ideal location to uh, construct a, a new auxiliary spillway. So this this line here is this pr proposed eye wall. This this is a is a combination of steel sheet pile that is um, driven into the hard foundation till, and then it's buttressed on both sides uh, with riprap and rock protection. So this sheeting will stay in place um, after stabilization as we work uh, towards final reconstruction. And that sheeting would be the foundation for a cutoff wall that would be installed in all of our embankments uh, to prevent against seepage and internal erosion um, within these embankments. So driving the sheeting now, it, it kind of serves both the purpose here in the interim condition, as well as uh, will be left in place and built on top of uh, for the final reconstruction as well. So the idea, um, Paul, is that all of the water would flow um, along the original river course. No. Yep, we close that close that area off and we send it back through the spillway footprint. You got it. So while the interim repairs and the construction of the interim repairs are ongoing at the Edenville Dam, we're also developing the engineering work plans and um, the, the engineering, the restoration planning to rebuild the, the dam. Um, there are some components that have been started on this, mostly development of design criteria and data collection. Um, I'm not going to go through the whole sequence of events. Again, they're very similar to the upper dams. The key milestones here is um, we're looking to um, start construction in quarter one of 2024 and construction would extend through 2025 and into 2026. Um, another um, key component of the Edenville and Sanford Dam restoration is um, the um, nat natural resources and ecosystem study that I had mentioned early on, and that, that process is ongoing. We're meeting regularly with DNR, Fish and Wildlife, and other stakeholders. Thanks for watching and make sure you hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video. Also make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next videos I will be posting and leave your questions, comments, and suggestions below. As always, I just want to give a massive thanks to the people who support me on Patreon. Never underestimate the value of your contribution to keeping this channel going. Thank you.